have a couple things happening today. Uh, I really felt over the last couple months that God wanted to us to refocus on the ministries that we have here at Cheers and what God's doing at Cheers. And so the la- last month, we had um, Melissa came and spoke about worship. We had the children's ministry represented, and Olivia came and spoke about beautiful girls. And so this month, we're going to look a little bit at the missionaries that we support, that Cheers supports every month. There are a number of missionaries that we um, give money to to help them in what they're doing and God's work. And in a moment, um, Sean's going to come up and speak about that. And then we also have Lester is going to give a bit of his testimony as well today. And then we'll have a little bit of time at the end um, just to open up the floor a little bit, and Joe will run that. So, without further ado, I have Sean coming up here who has a little presentation. A little presentation for Sean. A little clap for Sean. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over our missionaries and who we all support because um, not everybody maybe knows exactly who we're supporting. And I think that's super important to know um, where some of your donations are going to and what's happening around the world. So unfortunately, I I wasn't able to get pictures of all of them, um, some due to security reasons because they're in very closed countries and others, they just um, didn't respond. So um, (laughs) the first one that we support, and if you've been coming here for a couple years, you would have uh, gotten to know them a little bit, the Ramses. Um, They have spoken here, I think, twice now. Um, They are in India. And they've been there for, I think, three, going on four years. Um, They started out in a little place in the north called Lucknow, um, which is a very, very poor um, community. And they were there and ran a bed and breakfast, um, which is the reason they're able to stay in the country, because India is extremely uh, Hindu government. um, So Muslims and Christians are extremely persecuted there, actually. So um, the only reason he's allowed to stay there is because he has a business visa and this business is a bed and breakfast which um, brings people in and then they show them the slums so it's a really cool ministry in itself because it's just random people from all over the world who are backpacking or traveling they stay here at the bed and breakfast and then they get to go and they they all of their proceeds go towards the slum and then they actually take them in and show them so Um, And the slums of India, I haven't personally been, but uh, my mom has. And um, just seeing pictures, it's it's a whole nother world there. So it's definitely eye-opening to see. Um, So they were in Lucknow for two years. Um, They did amazing work in the slums. Um, They actually sent in an update a little bit ago, and uh, the child mortality rates um, went down by 40% since they've been there. So that's a, like a huge amount. Um, they run, they ran programs um, teaching just health and uh, getting moms in with children and just helping them on a basic uh, health-wise and how to take care of their kids and immunizations and all that stuff. So um, they've actually got it. So the slums, there's um, Christian families amongst the majority Muslim, there is Hindu as well, but it's, the slums are majority Muslim because Muslim is considered like very low class. Um, Hindu is, is the high, and then you have Muslims and Christians. So um, the slums are majority, like 99% Muslim. So um, they established a Christian community in the slums in Lucknow, and now it's self sustaining, which is amazing. So they're leading their own like church group out of there. Um, which is pretty awesome. So now they've moved on to a different place in India called Agra, I believe. Um, That's where the Taj Mahal is. So it's a lot more touristy. So they're kind of aiming at that and then also working in the slums again. So their brand new bed and breakfast is going to open up in September of this year. So um, definitely keep them in your prayers because it's going to be another frontier and battle for them to be doing. So that is the Ramses. Um, the next one is the Comance. Uh, they're going to be coming in April, right? Yeah, so they'll be able to share a lot more about what, what's happening. But they have planted three churches in Africa, um, one in Kenya, Zambia, and Rwanda. And they're now in Burundi planting another church. Um, so, yeah, you, you guys will get to hear from them next month a little bit more about exactly what they're, what they're doing. Uh, the next family is the Heinrichs. I do have a picture of them. Yeah, there we go. So 
they were in Mexico for several years. Um, they started a, a woman's shelter and well-established it there in Mexico. Uh, felt that God was then calling them on to Costa Rica. So they are now in Costa Rica. Their, their two sons are in university in the States, so it's just the parents who are there. And uh, they really focus on um, building churches, working with local pastors, um, church development. Um, I believe they are doing some more things with, the, with women there as well. Um, so, yeah, they've just been in Costa Rica, I think, for the last year or two. So it's pretty, pretty new that they've moved there. Uh, then we have Latitude Ministries, which many of you know Justin Manzi. Um, he's spoken here quite a few times. We usually try to have him here once or twice a year. Um, they have a really awesome ministry that focuses, again, on church development and leadership equipment. So they've been, he, he goes all over the world. He's been to so many places, I can't even tell you them all. Um, the most recent place they were in was Uganda. Um, again, just working with the church there and helping the leaders um, really grow um, and they do, uh, like, church surveys. They actually did one here a couple years ago that helps the church see where its strengths and weaknesses are and where they can grow. So um, that's, that's Justin Manzi and his wife there. And then the very last one is Teen Challenge, uh, which is a super awesome program that's local here in the Okanagan um, that supports men. Are they still doing women or just men? Yeah, okay. So um, each month or twice a month, we get um, a different gentleman, and we just get a different story about them on the back. So um, I'm just kind of going to be sharing when we get these in so that we know, um, we know the guy that we can be keeping in our prayers. So I'll just read. This is Ron, and it says here, I was raised in a loving Christian family with three older sisters but had little discipline and manipulated my teachers and others to get my way. I began drinking and experimenting with drugs as a teen, and by age 22, I already had a criminal record, messed up a promising career op opportunity, and destroyed numerous relationships. My addictions worsened as my life of deceit and denial continued. I entered the Teen Challenge for the first time in May of 2014. I left after 10 months because my pride and arrogance got in the way. Almost three years later, the Lord brought me back into the program. I am blessed to be able to build a strong, healthy relationship with God in a safe environment, with the loving support of staff and fellow students upon graduation, the Lord has instilled in my heart to pursue the 18-month surge program for graduates. I'm hoping to eventually serve at a team, a teen challenge center in Central or South America. So that's Ron's story. So he's our, our guy of the month to just um, be praying for. And um, yeah, every month we'll hopefully be doing an update um, where we could be sharing what's going on. And we also, are they coming for prayer? Yeah. So we also have Teen Challenge comes here on Tuesday, third Tuesday of the month. Um, they come here, and we just get to minister to them and pray for them, which is a really, really amazing opportunity. So um, I think that's everything. Thanks. Melissa, I need your help moving a few things. <laughs> If you could help me move up these two stools, and we'll move this table out of the way. Um, I'm not using the table. I think it's important to know who we're supporting. And it's important to just see that, uh, to see Melissa try to move furniture. That's <laughs> super fun. I did that on purpose. And you're welcome. Should we move the table? What do you think? Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. She didn't know I was going to ask her to do that. So, right? Very, very impressive multitasking. <laughs> it's really important to know who we're supporting, I think. And it's amazing that we're touching all the corners of the world. And we're, we're helping bring God to some areas that maybe wouldn't ever experience just who God is and the love of God and and if you want to know more about any of these ministries or missionaries, just come talk to Sean or myself. And over the next couple months, we're going to have a few of them coming and sharing. We have um, the Cormants coming, um, and they've been in Rwanda most recently, and they're coming at the end of April. Um, we have another missionary, um, Gary Heinrich, under the PAOC, and he'll be coming the following month. And then Teen Challenge will be coming. So that'll be like 
a greater opportunity for you to really connect with those people and uh, hear more from them. Now I have Lester coming up. Me and Lester are going to chat in front of you. <laughs> and we're going to pass the microphone back and forth awkwardly. <laughs> so I can't believe we're sitting up here together, right? We had a slight change of plans, so Lester graciously agreed to come and speak very last minute, so really appreciate it. Uh, so Lester and I first met in, I think, 2009? Yeah, 2009. Um, I was working at the men's shelter, and then he got hired. I think I might have thought you were a client. I don't know. Probably. Yeah, and because, <laughs> you know, I'm a jerk that way, but uh, anyway, so yeah, you showed up, and I was like, oh, okay, he's working here. Oh, all right. And, um, yeah, that was a long time ago now, hey? And so both of us, when we met, not into God. <laughs> no, neither of us. Yes, exactly. So both of us said, you know, you've heard my testimony a bit. And so Lester came and we, but we connect, we really connected on like spiritual things. So we would talk a lot about sort of new agey type stuff. We didn't know God yet, Okay. Neither of us were saved, and, but we met at work, and we would start connecting about other things. And we even, at one point, were using the gym here, because Joe and Dennis worked at the shelter, and they let us use the gym. And we would come and, like, play music. We probably, probably not godly music to work out to. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Eminem. Yeah. <laughs> don't listen to that anymore and um, yeah so we would come and we would work out and we would actually talk a lot I remember talking about church with you I actually specifically remember like being in the gym and because I was working with Joe and Dennis a lot and I was starting to actually I didn't know what it was but I was starting to feel the Holy Spirit kind of draw me and um, I remember talking to Lester and saying like you know I think I might um, I might check it out I think I might check it out here <laughs> and do you remember what you said I said, church, are you kidding me? Don't waste your time. So, that quote, unquote. But I didn't listen to him because <laughs> I'm so stubborn. And uh, I did come and the rest is history. But, yeah, so, um, but what happened was I came to church. I had some experiences, and I ended up getting saved. And we were still working together. And uh, Lester started seeing, like, a different Sarah after I was saved. And so I'm going to just pass you the mic from uh, this point. Talk about things that are important to you. No. So you saw me at work. I was saved. And I remember you were like, you're kind of weird with me. Like, like he would like used to talk to me a lot. And then I got saved and he would be like looking at me like, oh, like weirded out because I was different. Like, and I remember you even saying that, like, well, you seem really different. There's, like, a glow about you or something. And um, then you came to praise and prayer one night. I convinced you. It was very difficult to convince you, but you did come. Yeah, so now, now is that a better lead-in for you? Now I can pass you the mic? Okay, excellent. Here you go. Yeah. So, uh, so I've been up for 28 hours straight, and I'm Holy Spirit-filled, and I'm caffeine-filled. So whatever comes out of my mouth, I'm absolutely not responsible for So. Here goes, no, no, just kidding, just kidding. Um, yeah, no, so what Sarah said, yeah, it, she said there was kind of a glow. There was a glow. She's being modest. Uh, I was at the gym at the uh, Penticton Community Center. I saw Sarah, I took one look at her, and she was radiating, beaming, literally beaming, not making this up. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what's, what's that on her, right? Because I was, we, were, we talked about supernatural stuff, spiritual stuff, and, I didn't know the Lord. I didn't know anything. Even Christianity had spiritualism. Yeah, shocking, I know. But that's how ignorant I was. But I saw this light off of Sarah, and I came up to her, and I said, what's going on? And she proceeded to tell me, just gushing, 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 telling me what happened. And uh, she said, come on, come to Cheers. It can happen to you too. And I, I was impressed because I have uh, relatives and friends who travel the world, spend thousands and thousands of dollars, decades of their lives looking for something and not finding it. And, I, and I'm being, me being the practical guy saying, wow, Sarah, you stayed here right in Penticton and you did it all for free. 
And I was like, I was impressed. So I said, what a deal. So I said, can I get in on that deal? So uh, Sarah invited me to, uh, to Cheers on May 14th, 2013 at 7 p.m. It's tattooed in my brain. So, so I came. Well, I didn't actually. I woke up that Tuesday morning with the most severe headache imaginable. I don't get headaches. I never get migraines, but I woke up and it was a blistering one. And I struggled through that day. And it was one of those days where everything went wrong. It was like, a, I don't know, I'm old, so I'm going to refer to Homer Simpson. It was a Homer Simpson day. Do, 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 right? One of those. So I got through my work day and I was just, I was done. And I thought, I'm ready for bed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text Sarah, say sorry next time. And I did. And then Sarah texted me back and she said, you know what's going on, right? And I'm like, uh, no, because Sarah's a lot smarter than I am. So she said, it's the enemy. We talked about this, remember? And lo and behold, we did. We talked about the enemy a lot and a lot of other stuff. So what she said made sense. And I thought, yeah, yeah, it is the enemy setting me up for failure. So I'm going to kick the enemy right where it hurts. And I'm going to come to church. So I did. I, but, but again, it wasn't easy. I sat in my car. I see a red, Roger's red truck right there. My car was right behind it. I sat in there, and I sat there for about 10 minutes debating. Do I stay? Do I go? Do I stay? Do I go? Do I stay? Do I go? Finally, I, I pushed myself out of my vehicle, and I came inside. So, so I came in. Dennis just about fell over because Lester, the, <laughs> the anti-Christian, walked through the church doors, right? So Dennis was just like, oh, my gosh, buddy. And he wrapped his arm around me, and I, I pushed him away because I don't like to be touched, or I didn't back then. I said, don't touch me. Sarah came up to give me a big hug. I backed right off and said, do not hug me. So I, I, I looked at Dennis, and I said, uh, what do I do? And he says, well, you do nothing. Yet, uh, you just come and sit and listen to music and, and pray. And I looked around. There was no Bibles. So I thought, oh, I like this church. It's music and no Bibles. I'm like, well, this isn't going to be so bad. Maybe Sarah had something. So, so I came in, and uh, I sat right over there, that second row, one, two, three. I think it was the third chair right there. That's where I always usually sit or sometimes at the front. And, um, yeah, my background is I never went to church. Well, I went to church. I got dragged to church as a kid. My parents, my dad hated the church, hated Christians. I inherited those beliefs. Really couldn't stand Christians. Really had bad experiences in church. Churches were dead, empty, cold, lifeless places that were, were a total time suck. That was my lifelong five decades impression of church. And Christians, I'm sorry to say it, no offense, were not much better. Couldn't stand them, couldn't stand to be around them. I'm not going to go into what I thought of them <laughs> for a fear of offending you more. But it, it was totally negative, absolutely negative. So I'm sitting there, and I thought, okay, here we go. Jesus culture came on. The king is here, Kim Walker Smith. I started to cry. I started crying and crying and crying, and I couldn't stop. I'm not a crier, or I wasn't back then. And I didn't know why I was crying, but this, this, her love, the passion, the lyrics... The whole thing about the king is here, he is alive, he is real, it just hit me, hit me hard, really hard. And I started bending over, just sobbing. I looked up, there used to be a, Sorry. There used to be a big wooden cross here on the Cheers uh, stage. This is all the supernatural stuff starts happening. So I had saw three balls of light come whipping around the, uh, the cross, zooming around the, uh, the floor, up the, ce- up, the s- or up the walls, across the ceiling. Something in my spirit told me, this is God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity is here for you. And it ain't going to leave anytime soon. So I thought I was having a mental breakdown. And I turned and looked toward the back doors. And I thought, okay, now's my chance to run because I'm totally losing it. I'm not going to stop till I get to Penticton Hospital. So that happened, and then more crying, and then 
somewhere way up above in the heavens, the archangel Michael came down. He's about 50 feet tall. And he swept down, wrapped his uh, wings around me, and just loved on me like I've never been loved on before in my life. And then I really started to, to get scared. But something, or someone, something, someone told me, no, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Everything's good. So Joey, of course, saw what was going on and said, I sense that there's some people here in the audience to, or in the congregation tonight <laughs> who are experiencing some, some, some strange... I forget what Joey said. Anyways, he just got me to stand up and raise my hand, which I never do. And Joey came and uh, prayed over me and delivered me. So I had a lot of evil trapped inside. And uh, it was so bad that it felt like uh, this 50-pound cannonball shot out of me. I still see it in my mind, this black ball of goo just shot out. I went flipping forward. It was so powerful. For a week later, I had bruises across my hips. It was I hit that front those front rows chairs so hard. But after that, evil left me. I my feet didn't touch the ground for at least a week. I was floating. The first feeling I got after that was peace, a peace that I have never ever known, not since I was like maybe two three years old. After that, I felt things like joy, love, comfort, security, strength forgiveness, all those wonderful things. And all the negative stuff started to leave. Christ removed regret, fear, doubt, uh, lack of self-confidence, anguish, all, all, those, all the negative stuff just started getting pulled out, ripped out. So by this time, I was a total mess. So when I went to the back, I started hugging everyone in sight. I'm sure Joey still remembers. I grabbed Sarah, I hugged her, I cried, I grabbed Joy, I grabbed Dennis, I grabbed people I didn't even know, told them how much I loved them, told them how beautiful life was, how beautiful my life was, and I just asked Joy, I said, you know, what the heck just happened? So, take it from there. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> like, like, come on, that's amazing, that's God. That is God. That is God. That's our God, who, uh, yeah, is still, like, amazing to hear. I love hearing that again. And uh, yeah, just, yeah, it's incredible. I moved here in 2006. I met Olivia at a baby group. Um, you know, then I started working with Joe. I started working at the shelter, then you did, and then Joe got a job there. And, and just seeing that like ripple effect of how God used various people to touch lives. And, and even now, since we've been saved, the lives that God has touched through us, like, God, it's never just one person. God always, God never just works on just one person. You know, because I'm saved, like, there's people in my life that have experienced God that would never experience God. You know, now you're a case manager at the shelter, and you're, you're running things there in a way that you wouldn't have if you weren't saved. You know, so because of your salvation, even every client that comes in, they're they're having an experience of God somehow through Lester. And um, so all that happened. It was very dramatic. And I remember I was there. I was the whole time I was sitting behind Lester and I was like praying <laughs> for him. <laughs> I can't remember what I was praying, but I was praying it over and over. And I was just like, I think I was just praying like, yeah, open up, open up. Yeah, you're right. And, and I was just like praying open up open up because I could see like you know when he first came in obviously like he wasn't hugging anyone he was being all weird and then yeah I was just praying for him to open up and just to receive and receive and then just to see like what was happening in front of me was it was a miracle and uh, just incredible and then the change in you um, and then we both had to go to work like the next day <laughs> and so you know we all want to hear now just maybe how you were how do you mind me asking how old you were when you were saved? 52. So 52, a life of not having God, and then at 52 to be saved, and then to next day, next day, go to work, and, um, you know, you're a dad, you're a husband, and to have that family life. There's like a, a pre-saved Lester and then a salvation Lester. Would you mind just, like, sharing a little bit how... Things have changed since then. Can I share, like, how you prepared for this today? Because that's pretty, it's pretty funny. <laughs> so he came in this morning, and I was like, are you ready to share? And he's like, yeah, yeah. 
And I was like, okay, so we'll do this and this. And, uh, and uh, I was like, can you, you want to tell me just sort of what you've prepared? And he's like, well, I went on Google <laughs> and I looked up how to prepare your testimony. <laughs> I was like, excellent, very good. So we'll see how Google did. <laughs> I thought that was like testimony for dummies, right? Like, <laughs> like there's probably a book. So I guess phase two, did Google say like that was, so we just did part one, probably according to Google. And so now we're on to the part two. Gosh. Gosh. So, yeah, five decades before the old, the dead Lester. Yeah, I'll call him the dead Lester because he is dead. Actually, in my mind, it's funny when... Christ talks about that. He said the, the, that spirit is, is dead and gone, or that, that person is dead and gone, the soul. What, well, I forget. The soul is dead and gone. He's right. Because it, in my mind, that person is dead. And uh, even preparing for this, I had a hard time trying to remember what I was like five years ago. Really tough. It was a struggle. Now, I, I, of course, I know who I am now. But back then, five years ago, man, it's a blank slate. It really is. Because Christ has been working overtime on me and just wiping that slate clean, right? And just saying, it's done, it's finished, forget it, it's over. What it was like? Um, so, yeah, I grew up, my father was old school. I'm, I'm 52, or I'm, I'm more than 52 now. So I'm 57 now. So anyone who's in their late 50s knows what their fathers were like, that generation. They were all pretty much the same, Right? They're pretty distant, pretty not there, pretty tough. You pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. You've got a problem. You fix it yourself. You do things you're on your own. You don't ask for help because if you ask for help, that means you're, you're weak and you're lame and you don't deserve it, whatever it is, success, I guess. So, you know, you work hard. You, you, you work overtime. You put everything you have into it, and you don't ask for your neighbor's help. Right? You just do it on your own. There's winners and losers in life. And I'm sorry, that's the way the world is, I was taught. Right? Not many winners, lots of losers. Well, too bad. That's the way the world is. Suck it up. Get used to it because it ain't going to change. Right? These are the, th <laughs> the stuff I was brought up with, which was great if you were uh, uh, a kid who, who was smart, who, who was a winner to begin with, who had everything going for them. But if you're like me, who was... Uh, Severely uh, introverted, uh, bullied, picked on, uh, had zero self-confidence, didn't know who I was, um, miserable. I uh, self-medicated, coped by taking drugs and drank a lot didn't, through high school and into university, partied, loved marijuana. Oh, boy, did I ever. It was the best high until I found the Holy Spirit. Um, but, you know, I had lots of big dreams for myself in my 20s. I followed the rules, went to university, got good jobs, tried to get ahead, tried to get all those goals I wanted to get in life, failed miserably, banged my head against the wall so many times. By the time I was 30, I was pretty well given up on everything. And then my life, I started just living day by day, becoming cynical, bitter, full of regrets, uh, very miserable, out, very self-centered, out for myself. I used others so I could get what I wanted out of life and who cares about their feelings or what they thought. So it became very much the me man. I was that type. So, so that was me. Um, after I got saved, yeah, that all radically changed. I realized I needed people. I realized I needed to love people. <laughs> that was a shock because I didn't love anyone. I didn't even love myself. And as part of my journey, I had to, Christ pointed that out and said, do you love yourself? And I said, no. And that was a shock to hear myself say no, because it was the truth. And in my journey, I find the truth hurts. The truth is rough. The truth can just rip you inside out and mess you badly. But that's what God loves to do. He loves to mess you up rip you inside out, and renew your mind, transform your spirit, make you Christ in you, make Christ in you. That's what he does. I think that's a good point, like that transformation part, because it's not, it doesn't feel good. 
And I think it's something that some people resist. When God is like wanting to change something to transform something in you, and it's not pleasant. And sometimes, and we've been even speaking about that lately, which is why I jumped in, because um, we all need to be okay with understanding that God does want to transform us and be okay with it feeling a little uncomfortable because ultimately his goal is to heal. And um, so that discomfort is something we need to, to be all right with in order to have some of that healing. And you've spoken a little bit about some of that healing you've received. And I just want to interject here because Lester did briefly say this, but he just worked a graveyard shift (laughs) and he got off work at 8 a.m. So, yeah, I'm really impressed. But uh, so you now you've experienced some healing and uh, things changed from that cynicism, the bitterness. You've experienced some healing from that. And then just briefly, if you want to, how does that look for you like in a day? Just when you wake up in the morning, you know, (laughs) other Lester maybe woke up and felt that cynicism and that bitterness, but now certainly you must wake up with a sort of a different sense for your day. Could you just like briefly like let us know how that looks? Thanks. Yeah, Yeah, that's a really good question. How does my day look, my daily life look? Um, uh, I have no fear. I have no fear of the future. I, I don't worry, like I get up and the day is what it is. Uh, my, my family is not saved. My friends and relatives are not saved. That used to really bother me a lot after I got saved, really bother me. Now when I wake up in the morning, I just, I be, I be who I am. I'm at total peace with myself. I am self, I am not self-centered, but I am aligned in Christ. I am focused in Christ. I, I used to walk around like this all the time, staring at the ground. Now, ha, now God has me looking up. So I, <laughs> when I walk to work, I'm, it's amazing I'm not hit by a car because I'm always like looking up in the sky, looking up. He's got me into that habit of looking up, looking up, looking up, never down. Um, things come out of my mouth that I don't believe I'm saying. It's, um, I find that before it was all my mind and my, my soul, if I'm getting this right, talking. Now it's more and more in my spirit. So I'll say things to people that'll just shock me. I mean, they're, they're wonderful things. Like I tell people I love them. I tell guys I love them, right? <laughs> the old Lester, are you kidding me? Man, oh man, no. But I tell people, yeah, I love you very much. And they see it in my face and in my eyes that I'm telling the truth. And it shocks them too. But just hearing those words coming out of my mouth, it's like, you know, something supernatural is happening. And it continues to happen. Um, I have a great relationship with my family. Uh, my wife and I, we, it was a, we had a lot of tough years in our marriage. And, man, it, it, it went up and down, that's for sure. This, especially this last couple of years, it's been strong and getting stronger and stronger and deeper and deeper. And I love her more than man, oh man, almost as much as God, almost. <laughs> and my kids too. I was never a, a family man, absolutely the opposite of that. It was all because I was all about me, right? I just had the kids, well, oh, I shouldn't say this, oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't, they might be watching, you know. They weren't a big priority in my life. There we go. I'll, I'll put it gently. Now they're everything. Man, they are everything. Oh, boy. They're, they're both in uh, Nanaimo right now, and I miss them to death. I text them every day. I call them. Oh, they're, they're just the love of my life, almost as much as God. So, yeah, my, my daily life has changed radically. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm at peace. That's the big thing, at peace. And, just, and the best thing, I think the best thing, the best thing, the best, best, Best thing is knowing who you are, discovering who you are. I read somewhere that the three great questions are, you know, who is God, who am I, why am I here? Who is God, I'm, I'm working on that. Who am I, man, that's coming in hard and fast and it's beautiful. What's my purpose, that's coming in slowly, too, slowly, but it's coming in steady and slow, but it's good. That's awesome. That is so awesome to hear. Um, I know one of the things we're really focused on right now here is relationship and just developing relationships um, within the body. And one of the things we asked Lester if he'd be interested in doing is picking up the men's breakfast. 
right? Remember, you were going to think of a date for that? Mm -mm. Yeah. So (laughs) if that's something that's of interest to you, if you're maybe wanting to help out with that, um, chat with Lester. He might hug you now that he's all full of love and whatnot. And you might cry on your shoulder a little bit. Have a tissue ready for him, maybe. I'm not sure. But it's so beautiful. Um, Thank you so much for sharing. We'll just give Lester a a hand here. And give God a hand for the work he's done. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, And you're going to come up now? It's your turn. Here you go. No, and that's a big part of... uh, like our two core values here at Cheers are uh, relationships and the presence of God. And so these uh, last Sunday of the month, we are really trying to focus on that and build that into, you know, that we start to build relationships with each other and we get to know each other and hear each other's stories and, and have a time of fellowship together. So um, it's, it's important. It's, you know, we, churches, in a church, you, you, need to, you need each other. You need to know each other. It's not just about coming in and going out, but actually spending some time and uh, hearing each other's hearts because God, so much of what God does in us is through those relationships. I would say, you know, 90% of what the healing and everything is always through someone else because that's how we're designed. That's how the body's designed. You know, we're, the, we're all part of the body and we all are part of that tree. And, and so we, relationships with each other is where God does so much of his work. Um, we were actually supposed to have my my grandma was going to share. She was going to we were going to hear a bit of her story and everything, but she wasn't uh, feeling up to it today. So um, thanks, Lester, for jumping in like that. And um, so you can keep her in your prayers. She's not getting any younger. Uh, but we also just wanted to have uh, a little bit of time here amongst uh, the congregation this morning, just to uh, hear you know if, if what what's on your heart. Like if you feel like God's spoken to you something for this year, there's something that you're believing for. There's something that you're uh, uh, want uh, to let people know about or just prayer for. Um, yeah, so we just thought we'd open up the mic a little bit and just have a, a few, give everyone a, give uh, people who would like an opportunity and just a uh, few moments to share. So if, uh, is there anyone that would like to share a little bit? I'll come to you. You don't even have to get up. Just what God's been doing in your life. Carmen? Why don't you share? <laughs> hey? What's God been doing in your life these days? What's God speaking to you? You're putting me on the spot here. <laughs> um, I think he's really calling me to deepen my relationship with him. Um been resisting a little bit, I suppose, in that I my excuse is I don't have time because I'm a single mom. But I really been feeling convicted lately to just um, spend more time with God and deeper and deepen that relationship with Him. Well, why don't we just pray for Carmen? Why don't you just uh, extend your hands to her, Father? We just pray, Lord, God. Carmen does carry a big load, Father. Uh, being a single parent like this, Lord. And so we just pray right now, God, just your strength upon her, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, God, and that your love is for her. And I pray that um, in the busyness of her life, God, uh, in the times where she just feels overwhelmed, God, that your peace would be upon her, Lord, and that she would be able to um, find those opportunities, Lord, just to uh, take those moments with you. So just bless her, Lord. We love her. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Thanks, Carmen. Anyone else? Sherry. Um, This isn't so much about what God's doing in my life, but this is a prayer request that I would like everyone in the body to pray for. And it's for my daughter-in-law, Stephanie. I had the thought this morning that it's been like 12 years that she's been this lost soul that is just... She's had glimpses of God here and there, but she is just completely lost and in darkness. 
And I've been praying for so many years, and I've given up. I've totally just given up on her. And I saw her yesterday, and she's, nothing's changed. Like, it's just, I'm just asking for corporate prayer for her. She's the mother of my four precious grandbabies, and I just want prayer for her, please. Father, we just thank you, God, that uh, you hear the hearts cry. Lord, you're moved by the heart's cry, Lord. And uh, Lord, we do pray, Lord, for Stephanie, God, Lord, that she would have an encounter with you, Lord, an encounter with your love, God. Lord, understanding, Lord, that would just penetrate the the darkness, that would just penetrate the cloudedness, God, that would just penetrate uh, the hard places, God. Lord, that she is loved of you, Father. And so, Lord, we do, we ask that you would send your angels around her, God, and that they would... uh, Lord, just be warring for her soul, God, and she would uh, become alive, Lord, and awaken to the reality of your truth, Lord, of of who you are. Lord, we just pray the spirit of truth would just descend upon her, God, and the the, the lies that have been believed, God, uh, the the, the way the enemy has just blinded her, God, would just be uh, exposed, and Lord, your truth would just speak. So, Lord, we pray, Father, we know, God, that you can uh, give... Damascus Road experiences that transform lives. And we ask, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Sherry. What else? Okay, about how I came to Cheers. Um, I've been at the Salvation Army for about 10 years, close to 10 years now. And throughout my life, I have waffled on and off about God. I haven't been sure. Um, Sometimes I've really doubted and I've dabbled in different kind of, you know, like tarot cards and stuff like that. So when I met Joey, he became my supervisor at work. And um, I don't know what it was about Joey because I was going to a different church but wasn't really getting uh, anything out of it. And uh, Joe had said, come on down to Cheers. So my friend and I, Jillian, came to Cheers. And we liked it. We liked the passion instead of just the drone stuff. It was interesting and we uh, we were really uplifted with it. So I started coming to Praise and Prayer. And uh, I was here with my friend Jill, and they were having the heal- healing circle. Uh, most of you know that I'm sick. Uh, thank God I'm getting through it okay. Um, so I was at uh, Praise and Prayer, and Darren had, and I think Lester as well, and Lori maybe, they prayed around me um, for my healing and stuff. And uh, I came and sat with my friend Jillian, and I was really upset because I had just found out how really sick I was, and didn't know if I really wanted to believe in God or, or anything. So I was actually sitting right there and um, just crying because uh, my life's been fairly hard. Uh, lost my son and was just crying to God, like, if you're really there, you show me a sign. Because if you're not, I'm not coming back. I- I'm done with this. Uh, I said, you have to, I-, I need proof. So I was praying and we were singing and that kind of stuff. And we left and uh, Jillian said to me, so did you get a word from God? And I said, no. She goes, you didn't get a word. I said, the only thing that kept going through my head was be still. And me, not knowing that it was a verse in the Bible, thought it was myself telling myself to calm down, you know, be still, relax, it's okay. So she told me that was it was from um, Psalms, and it was be still, know I am God. And from that day forward, I have, I don't waffle anymore because it was God telling me to be still, that everything was going to be okay because I was really in a point in my life where I wasn't sure. And now I'm still here, and I do Beautiful Girls with Olivia, and I find sometimes, like I'm in and out of the hospital quite a bit, and, you know, sometimes you see someone who's crying, and it's just not me, but it is now, 
And I've actually asked them if they want me to pray for them, and they've said yes. And um, life couldn't be better. I mean, things are really tough, but life couldn't be get better because I know that I have a purpose and that I am really loved, and I love this church and God. So that's my story, and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, Sandy. It's, it, it, I, it's, it's great to see you because you have come a long ways and see that in you. So why don't we just pray for Sandy, just specifically in the area of her health. Father, we just declare your healing touch right now upon Sandy's body, God. Lord, you have done so much to heal her emotionally and, and spiritually, God. And we ask, Lord, that you just continue just to heal her physically, God, that you would bring strength upon strength to her body, God. Lord, that would astound just the doctors, God, because you are a moving God and you are at work in her, Lord. So we thank you for that, God, and we recognize the miracle that has taken place in her heart and her life. And we just pray your blessing, God, that every door that would be shut, Lord, would just uh, begin to open, God, where, where there's just been hardship and struggle, God. Lord, that you would go ahead and make a way, Father. I pray just financially, God, your provision over her life. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Try not to cry here. Hold on. So, I, there's so many things that God's doing in my life right now and through my family that it's absolutely crazy. I couldn't even mention it all. Um, my word for this year was to surrender and not just a little bit, but totally give over, which I haven't done yet, but I'm working on it. But as I do, people in my family are getting saved like crazy. My son called me last week. He's 21. He's living with his girlfriend in Kelowna. I'm just sending her. He asked me to come down and take him to church in Kelowna. Uh, there's another church there that I go to once a month. And I've been praying for him. The last I got on my hands and knees and prayed for him about a month ago and just asked God to um, fix all the damage I'd done from when I wasn't a Christian mom. And I've been talking to him and asking him to forgive me. And here I'm standing beside my my son who's like way taller than me. He's got hands in the air. And he's singing louder than me. And he's just totally in for God. And uh, his girlfriend's coming right up in behind him. And that, that's happening throughout my family. The more that I give in, and the more that I hit my knees, and the more that I pray, and the more that I just totally give into God, one by one, each one of them are coming to God. It's pretty, pretty cool. Well, let's just uh, let's just pray that I would continue, and God would just continue just to speak. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for these uh, salvations, Lord. We thank you, God, that Lord, it, it, like Sarah said, we're, we're all connected, God, and you you pull one of us here, and you deal with something here, and you. Lord, that everything's connected, and, and as you change us and mold us and shape us, God, it, it has a ripple effect on those around us. And we thank you, Lord. We stand with uh, Celine, God, in these testimonies of your faithfulness and your goodness and your love, God. And we pray that uh, for this young man and his uh, girlfriend, Lord, God, that you would so get a hold of their hearts, God, in a, a mighty, mighty way, Lord, and they would just rise up in all that you have for them, and your freedom would just continue to be poured out upon them. We thank you, Christ. Amen. 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 Well, thank you for sharing today. It's just a, a little glimpse into each other's lives and hearts and uh, just understanding that uh, God is at work. God's at work in, in us and, and in those we love. And that's just, uh, you know, we, we need that reminder sometimes that we're not alone and uh, that God's doing good things. Uh, I'm just going to say grace and then we're going to set the tables up and just get you to come and help out with that. And we'll, uh, we'll, we'll eat. There's uh, plenty of food, so uh, even if you didn't bring something, don't... Uh, don't think that you're allowed to run out the door. We, we want you to stick around and, uh, and have a bite. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this church. We thank you for what you're doing in us and through us, Lord. We thank you for, Lord, how we're able to reach around the world, God, even. Uh, that's how you're using us, God. And yet, in our own lives and with our families and our, the people close to us, Lord, you're using us in those areas as well, Lord. So we thank you, God, because you're, you're taking our little, God, and you're you're magnifying it, God. You're making it go further than we ever could on our own, Lord. And we recognize that, God. And we give you praise and glory and honor for that, Lord. And 
And God, we just, I just pray your blessing over every person here today, God, that they would be encouraged and that they would just feel renewed and a sense of hope and love, God, because you are with us, Lord. And I pray that we'd never forget that you are with us, Lord. Uh, Lord, we just pray your blessing upon uh, this time of fellowship now and upon this meal, Lord, and, and uh, just uh, let your goodness rest upon us. We love you, Lord. Everyone said, amen.